Hey friends, my name is Osama and today I'll be sharing a really special story. A story that not many people know and it's the fact that nuclear fission is actually a naturally occurring process that took place on Earth. Believe it or not, it's a discovery that goes to show that Mother Nature can also be called a nuclear engineer. Now, two billion years ago, 17 naturally occurring fission reactors operated in West Africa and they were located in an area called Oklo. In this video, step by step, I'll be going through questions like, how were these nuclear reactors discovered? How does Oklo site help us understand nuclear waste? And also, what are the differences between a conventional commercial nuclear reactor as opposed to a natural nuclear fission reactor? And lastly, why don't we find these nuclear reactors across the world? Let's start with a bit of history. Now in the year 1972, a French company conducted uranium mining in this area in Gabon called Oklo. Now nuclear fuel processing plants in South, uh, South France, they take this, these ores and they process them. Now while processing these ores, physicists, they found through samples that there was something off. The samples that they took found that the percentage ratio of a certain uranium isotope U-235, it was off by 0.03%. For us, it may seem like it's a very small difference, but for these physicists, they knew that if they scaled this ratio to the whole site, it would go to show that around 200 kilograms of U-235 was missing. Scientists, they came to a conclusion, and the conclusion was that naturally occurring nuclear fission reactions were taking place and consuming this U-235. The difference was that these reactions weren't taking place nowadays, they were taking place billions of years ago. All right, how did this natural reactor operate? First of all, it was located in an area that was very rich in uranium. That means there's fuel everywhere, okay? Now these pieces of uranium ore that are floating, floating around were exposed to groundwater flow. And groundwater is really important because it acts as a moderator. Now a moderator is a fancy way of saying something that controls a reaction. Now water is what most commercial nuclear reactors use to, to start the fission process and continue it. It's similar to how in a reactor vessel, commercial reactor vessel, water flows over the fuel and actually starts the reaction and it continues the reaction. Water, what it does is it slows down neutrons. Neutrons are like bullets hitting other uranium and causing uh, causing fission to occur, chain reactions. So water slows down neutrons that are being sent off by U-235. And these neutrons, when they're slowed down, are more efficiently able to hit their targets. Why is this not possible in air? Why don't we have nuclear fission taking place in uranium mines? Well, the reason why is because without water, neutrons, they move so fast that they bounce off atoms and they don't necessarily produce that chain reaction. Every time groundwater flew into that natural repository, chain reaction would start. Water would start to boil up and heat, evaporate eventually. Once water dried out, the reaction would stop. And then once more water came in, the reaction would start again. So it was on and off reaction for millions and millions of years. All right, so the question is, why don't we see nuclear reactors operating nowadays? Why can't I go to the Grand Canyon or Niagara Falls, find myself a nuclear reactor? Well, the secret lies in the uranium element itself. Now there's two main elements in uranium, U-235 and U-238, okay? Now U-235 is the fissile isotope. It's the isotope that does all the action. It's, it's the hero in the story, okay? So U-235 has a shorter half-life. So over time, it depletes faster, okay? Today, in this day and age, around 0.7% of all uranium on Earth is U-235. Whereas when the Earth was first formed, around 30% of uranium was U-235. Two billion years ago, coincidentally, you'll find that the percentage of U-235 was the same amount that commercial nuclear reactors use in this day and age, which is around 3%. That means that without enriching uranium fuels, you could produce a self-sustaining nuclear reaction without enrichment. Just add water and you're good to go. The only difference is that commercial nuclear reactors, in order to, pr to reach that 3%, so go from 0.7%, 3%, they would have to go through enrichment process. So you would need to put uranium through centrifuges 
go through a whole entire process to filter out that uranium and eventually get to that level. Two billion years ago, self-sustaining nuclear reactions could take place. And the question is, why haven't more natural nuclear reactors have been found in the world? Well, the reason why is because many of these reactors were probably destroyed in natural geological processes, right? Like erosion. Another reason why is because there's really specific site conditions that are needed for these reactors to take place. It's not like waterfalls. It's, it's something that's very, very rare in nature. Although nuclear reactors haven't been found in the world, there are other natural geological repositories and formations uh, like in parts of the world like Canada and Australia that, that can be found and studied. Let's jump into nuclear waste migration. What does this nuclear reactor tell us about nuclear waste products and radioactive nucleides? Over the two billion years, there is a signature that was left on that site. Uh, fission byproducts like plutonium, which are found in spent fuel, within commercial nuclear reactors were also found in samples in Oklo. The surprising find is that atoms of plutonium never moved from the grains of uranium from which they were found, although they were exposed to groundwater flow and movement for over 2 billion years. Most of the radioactive fission byproducts, so the nuclear waste products, were safely contained in that area for 2 billion years. And what's interesting is that our commercial nuclear reactors have a lot of safeguards, containment vessels, a lot of safety precautions that uh, that don't allow these radionuclides from escaping out into nature. But you'll find here that these natural nuclear reactors, they operated out in the open with no containment. And you'll see that the nuclear waste migration had a very minimal impact on the environment. Oklo is a case study that is extensively studied by scientists, by nuclear engineers, uh, to, to really understand the migration of fission byproducts, spent fuels from nuclear reactors, and also their behaviors in underground depositories. So it also confirms that disposal of nuclear waste isn't, isn't a grand scheme to necessarily pollute the earth or groundwater. Rather, it's a well-researched science that looks at the long-term geological and hydrological behavior of a repository. Overall, Oklo nuclear reactor goes to show that mother nature was well ahead of her time. Humans, we, we initiated the first artificially induced nuclear chain reactions in the year 1942 with Enrico Fermi, a Chicago pile reactor. Uh, but mother nature was well ahead of her time. If these natural nuclear reactors in Oklo operated today, they would produce enough energy to power up 1,000 light bulbs. It's not a lot of electricity, uh, so around 100 kilowatts of power, but it's something. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found this video fascinating. I know I really did when I studied about the Oklo nu natural nuclear reactors. Please comment in the, com in the comment section below and let me know what you'd be interested in hearing about next. Thanks again. Take care.